Welcome back, peeps, to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle here on this Thursday. And our good friend Chris Denary joins us as the Pacers will wrap up preseason play tonight at home against the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, and so they've looked pretty decent through the preseason so far. I mean, you're, you're not going to – I don't know how much to, that even in basketball the team wants to show – uh, in the preseason because they're playing a lot of different guys, Chris. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Jim. And in fact, on Tuesday against Memphis, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Pascal Siakam, TJ McConnell, and Aaron Neesmith didn't even dress. So you had four key rotational players that, that they gave the night off to. Um, I would assume that the majority of the starters that I think everybody plays tonight, I don't know how much time it is because if you don't play – then it'll be about a two-week period from the last preseason game that Halliburton and Siakam played in that they will play in next Wednesday against Detroit. So I would anticipate that most everybody plays tonight. Uh, I could still see very limited minutes. Uh, you still want to see what some of the guys are trying to do to, to, to hang on to the end of the roster. But you're right, this team is pretty deep. I, I tend to think that we are going to see this team play some full court pressure this year. And I don't think they want to show that right now, but, but I think with their depth and what we saw in the postseason last year, I thought it really helped the Pacers defense when they picked up full court. That's tough to do in an 82 game season. Uh, you know, when you're playing back to back games and four games in five nights, but I think the Pacers depth can help them do that. I also think, by doing that, it, it hides some of the inefficiencies that this team has had in the half court defensively. They all know that, you know, to, to get where they want to go, and they got pretty far last year, right, to the Eastern Conference Finals, they've got to be better defensively. So I, I could see this team utilizing its depth with the more uh, full court pressure this year. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before I forget, uh, in their last game out, they lose at home to the Grizzlies, 121-16. And Zach Eady with uh, a surprising game. Uh, what do you have? Twenty three and nine, I think. Yeah. He was he was very efficient, and and you know he looks good. I think you know his his body looks a little bit leaner. I'm sure he will put on more pounds as it goes, but uh, they ran a lot of the offense through him, which I don't think you'll see once the regular season starts because for them, John ja Morant didn't play, Marcus Smart didn't play. Uh, Gigi Jackson's out, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s out. So I almost at times felt like I was watching a Purdue game because they really centered the offense around Zach Eady, and he was highly effective. He he did his typical fake to the inside, drop step, baseline, dunk. Uh, he had a number of rebound putbacks. Uh, very, very impressive. So uh, I expect he'll be in the starting lineup for Memphis. Um, I think he's going to have a good year. I really do. Uh, he took a three-point shot. Uh, I thought he ran the floor pretty well. Uh, it, it will be interesting to see the type of impact as a rookie that Zach Eady can have on the Memphis Grizzlies. When healthy, this can be one of the better teams in the NBA. Uh, they won 56 games two years ago, or three years ago, 51 two years ago, and then last year had all kinds of injuries, and they only won 27 games. So this is a team with a pretty deep roster, that I think Zach Eady fits into quite well. Yeah, and not only that, you've got uh, Kellel Ware from Indiana uh, a year ago, now with the Heat, and he has come out like a house on fire with lots of people talking uh, potential rookie of the year, even though he probably won't start. Yeah, he no, he won't start. He'll back up Bam Adebayo. Adebayo is really good and an Olympian. Uh, played his college basketball at Kentucky and has really developed into a, a really good NBA center. But, you know, Ware's going to get a lot of opportunity. And Miami, I would say, has one of the best player development uh, coaching staffs in the NBA. So, uh, yeah, I expect that Ware will have a really good year. I, I think there are a lot of good rookies. Everybody's looking forward to the to next summer, the 25 class, uh, led by Cooper Flagg out of Duke. They say it's one of the the deepest draft classes that we're going to see in a long time. Uh, you know, this year people didn't feel like this draft was that great, but, but I think there are a lot of guys under the radar uh, that have an opportunity to put up some really good numbers and where definitely is one of those. 
Yeah, he uh, he has just looked extraordinarily athletic, uh, and he brings a lot to the table because he can play inside, be uh, an eraser, or step out and knock a three-point shot down, which he's only going to get better at that. So it's going to be fun to watch his career go, and he's probably in a, as good a place as he can be under the, the Pat Riley tutelage, and Pat Riley knows what he's doing as an NBA executive. Oh, no question. Uh, Eric Spolster's been the head coach there for – uh, he's been with the he's been with uh, Miami, I think now thirty years, um, and he's been the head coach since he took over for Pat Riley. Won a couple of NBA championships. He's been an assistant on the Olympic team. So yeah, I think it's a good spot. Um, and you know, like I said, it's always fascinating to see these young guys develop across the NBA. I think for the Pacers, uh, we're we're going to see an emergence of Jarris Walker this year. I mean, he's been very good. Uh, in the preseason. Uh, he's moved from the four to the three. Uh, I believe he'll get rotational minutes there. Uh, it, it's just good to see these young players. I mean, I, I think the NBA is in a great place. You you have your veterans, you have your Steph Curry's, your LeBron James, Kevin Durant's, but you have all this young talent. Tyrese Halliburton is one of those. He's only 24 years old. You have all this young talent that's starting to emerge. And I think uh, that puts the NBA in a great place. Uh, were the Pacers, were the starters, or, or see a lot of time tonight with, with this being the last preseason game? I'll be interested to see because those guys didn't play on Tuesday. Um, I, I tend to believe that they'll play tonight. How much, I don't know. Um, and, and I said if they don't play, then you would go all the way back to last week, the last time they had actual game experience. Now, this team works uh, – competitively in practice and works pretty hard. They go after one another quite a bit. And, and I know Rick Carlisle likes that, but I would anticipate that those starters would get minutes tonight. How many, I don't know. Uh, we didn't really find out till about an uh, hour and a half or so before the game on Tuesday that Halliburton and Siakam, McConnell and Neesmith would sit out. So I, I would assume we won't know anything in, until we get into the building tonight. Uh, and now looking at the Lakers, Bronny James uh, has, well, last I checked, at negative 40, by far the biggest uh, plus minus in the NBA. And that negative 40, that is a deep number. Uh, how far will the Lakers have to go to for it to be, for it to dawn upon that LeBron, that his son is just not an NBA player. Well, I, I don't think, you know, I don't think to me there's expectations for him this year. I mean, I, I, again, I, I, you know, J.J. Reddick's a brand new coach. Uh, you've got Nate McMillan, who was the former Pacers coach, is now an assistant. Um, the question will be is how much time do they have Bronny spend with their G League franchise to give him the opportunity to play uh, big minutes? Um, you know, I think athletically, he probably, you know, is there. But from a basketball standpoint, I, you know, if you look at his numbers at USC, look at his numbers in summer league and what he's done here in the preseason, you know, you would have to say he's he's definitely not ready to play. So, you know, I look at it this way, Jim. I mean, he was picked number 55. Um, it, I don't really have a problem with it because if you look at those last 10 picks, 50 to 60, there are some guys that are in the league, no question, but for the most part, those are fringe guys that spend most of their time either playing uh, in the G League or if it doesn't work out, they go overseas. So I don't really have a problem with them spending that pick on him. Um, it, it, again, his issue is his last name and his dad, right? He's He's got a lot to live up to. Um, so it'll, it'll just be interesting uh, to watch. Yeah, but unfortunately, I feel like he's playing into this because it's everyone. I, everyone knows that he's not an NBA level player. I don't know that he's going to become one, but I am not Nostradamus. But I will say this: I thought Sean East outperformed uh, James in the summer league, although a slightly different position. But he still seemed to have more of an effect. But then you have guys like Jalen Huchifino, the former Indiana guard, who is, you know, he's trying to stay in the uh, in the rotation of, of the Lakers as well. Coming up, what is this, his third season now? 
Uh, second, second or third. I'm not sure. Right. I mean, the advantage that Hood Shafino has, though, I think Ronnie signed a, a guaranteed contract as a, a second round pick, just just like Andrew Nemhart did a few years ago. He signed a fully guaranteed pick. I mean, he turned out to be a great pick. Uh, but, you know, the, the advantage you have when you're a number one pick is you get more dollars and they, they've got to sign you to, a, uh, you know, that rookie deal. Uh, usually it's they, they, your, your first two years are for sure guaranteed. Then year three, you know, most players are going to get at least four years on their on their rookie deal. Um, you know, somebody just put on the on the screen, which is true. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis was a uh, pr pretty good um uh, pick in the fifties, you know, very rarely do picks in the fifties hang around, but, but the TJD has played pretty well. He went to the yeah, right. Too. He exactly. went to the right. You have to go to the right team. I mean, if, if Jackson Davis, and, and again, no disrespect, but if, if, if as the 50, he goes to Charlotte, you know, it, it could be a, it could be a whole different scenario for him than it, where he is with golden state. You have to go to a team that has a plan to use your skills that you yes. have. And and Trace yeah. Jackson Davis has he's got a certain set of skills, uh, as one would say. But uh you know what his skills are. It's it's not to be a step out and be a three-point shooter, right. but he's got other he's he's relentless inside, he's a great right. rebounder, shot blocker, defender, uh, but and can score on the inside. So I right. you know what you had there. And if you have a team that can put that in, what's like Zach Eady? Zach Eady, I don't know that he could play for just any team because he couldn't play for the Pacers, I don't think, because the Pacers are wanting to get up and down the floor. Right. Uh, Zach Eady is not going to be running up and down the floor that much, I don't think. But uh, I, I agree with you. Kalel Ware, again, he I think he went to the exact right spot. Um, these teams pick guys because they know what uh, they're doing, what they're trying to do. And they try to fit those pieces in to their equation. Yeah. Fit is important. And that's why I, I do believe, and again, it's early and it was low risk, high reward. I really believe that James Wiseman can fit in to this Pacers team because I think he runs the floor better than, than anybody thought he, he, he's a good offensive rebounder. He provides the Pacers with things that they need and early on, I've seen him fit in, especially with that second unit with T.J. McConnell. Um, so it, it is it is finding a, a proper fit. And a lot of times that doesn't happen in the draft. Sometimes it takes certain players to go to another team uh, to make that fit. Um, and, and sometimes it's just a lot of patience. Um, but But to your point... Uh, Jackson Davis, I think, is a perfect fit for Golden State because of what they do around the perimeter and how they utilize their big. Absolutely. Uh, this weekend, Indiana, having a huge, huge athletics weekend, Chris. Uh, it starts Friday night with Hoosier Hysteria, men's and women's basketball tip-off. It's more of a more of a dog and pony show, but it gives it gives fans that – probably won't have an opportunity or very few opportunities to get to see Indiana play because it's free. Uh, they can come in and see everything, line up and all of that. And it's homecoming weekend, but then Saturday, the Hoosiers yeah. take on Nebraska, baby, in a big nationally televised game. Uh, it's a huge sports weekend for the state of Indiana, I think, as well. Yeah, no question about that. And and I saw the, the stat, and I know it's the preseason, but the first time in, in school history that the football team, the men's basketball team, and the women's basketball team have all been ranked in the top 25. And that's and not only that, impressive. the soccer team is 22nd yeah. in the RPI. I mean, that's, that's incredible. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing Kurt Signetti's team, uh, what they can do on Saturday. It's Nebraska. Uh, you know, but – and it's great to see Memorial Stadium sold out with Indiana fans. I mean, I think that's that's the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a great weekend. Uh, Hoosier Hysteria tomorrow night and then uh, IU Nebraska football on Saturday. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, the just the environment of this game. And that's what Indiana fans have missed for so long is – 
the environment of a charged football stadium. There's yep. nothing like it. Um, you, it's, it starts with all of the tailgating. It is just a different vibe, man. Uh, basketball is what it is, but football is just something that's different. And it is because the, the, the audiences are so much bigger. Of course, it just drives more noise, more everything. Yeah, I mean, 50,000 plus, uh, you're right. I mean, Assembly Hall is great, um, you know, it's 17,000, but you're talking three times the number of that, the, the volume of people. And as you said, the tailgating and outside it's fall. Um, this will be one of those days that people will make a check mark by and hopefully it ends in a win. Uh, you know, it's just like a few weeks ago. I mean, if you're a Vanderbilt fan or alum or a student, that day will live with you for a long time, the day that you beat number one Alabama. And uh, for Indiana football fans and Indiana fans in general, uh, Saturday is a very, very big day. Absolutely. Big thanks, Chris Denary, man. Enjoy right. the rest of your day. Uh, get your car taken care of and uh, give a shout out to uh, those the peeps at Ed Martin Acura. So uh, hopefully we'll be talking to them as well. All right. But uh, have a great weekend, brother. Okay. Thanks, Jim.